Let's talk about FISH. The FISH shell, that is. It stands for the Friendly Interactive Shell, and it's a lot more featureful than Bash or ZSH. And I've been playing around with FISH for a little while, and I've resolved to make a video about it, but work schedule got crazy and I had to put it on hold for a bit. But now, I want to go over some of the best features of FISH, in my opinion, and reasons why you might want to make the switch. After the bump. Here we are in our shell. You, this is Dev1 with uh, De, see it's Dev1 Chimera and it has my build of ST and it is running Fish by default now. So one of the greatest things that I have found about Fish and what really drew me into it, this one feature in and of itself was the main draw for me was the auto completion because well I'm lazy I've got big hands and typing is not really great for me even though I've kind of powered my way through it I, I'm not I'm not the best typer so if I so if I were to say sudo apt install and see it actually pulls up the last thing I installed which was LM sensors Another thing that was really nice about this is if you give a command that has some options. So let's say I want to run the ls command, but I'm going to give it a flag. I can actually give it, you know, the dash symbol and then press tab and it will pop up, you know, the dash one, list one entry per line, dash a for almost all, dash lowercase a for all, you know, show the hidden files and all that. Or you can press tab again and get all of them so this right here is a game changer for if you just want to quickly see the options that you can give a command without checking the man pages because well man pages some of them are written in a way where you got to have 160 iq to even begin to understand it and well i don't so <laughs> this is great for me so one of the other good things about fish is the syntax highlighting and this is all owned by default so let's say you mistype something it's going to show up as red in a red font if you just mess up royally so i'm going to show that off now i'm going to purposefully mistype something let's say i want to install htop or something so i You see that I said sudi instead of sudo. Apt install htop. So if I hit enter here, it's going to say it doesn't know what sudi is. So sudo apt install htop. And see, I, I mistyped the clear command, C L A E R. And that showed up in red as well. So You can see when you type it correctly, it shows up in blue. And the command actually executes. So this is a really, really nice shell, and it, but it takes a little getting used to. Because I know some of you are going to say, you know, I can't, you know, I don't want to use fish because it's not POSIX compliant. And to that I say, okay, I get that. Because certain things that you type in fish let's say you wrote a script in fish it's not going to be portable to bash or to zsh hardly especially if it has an if statement or if it's you know has a bashism or if it, it the older ones couldn't handle and and or you know something like that so if you have a bashism or let's say you call up a variable and you want to have a dollar sign in bash fish does not want the dollar sign so you know it is what it is so if you saw my last video where i made a my imaginary distribution with dev1 series with spectre wm and the fish shell and it was all customized and pretty and stuff i was running the fish shell as the user in there and also as the root user was was also using fish 
but all of the scripts were bash scripts and they were called as such in the script even though fish was the shell that called the script up the shell that it executed in was bash it just was not apparent to the user because in the script when you do the shebang you call which shell you want so running my bash scripts in fish well calling them up through fish rather has not been a problem at all so now that i've gotten all that out of the way i want to go through my fish configuration i went through a little bit of it in my last video just kind of showing it off but i've added a few functions in there which is honestly they're super duper simple they could have probably been abbreviations but i set them up as functions because why not so let's so i can do dot c and that will actually i got that set up as an abbreviation to cd into dot config we're going to run ls command and we can do, and we can you know cd in not vd cd into fish run an ls and we have a config.fish file here so so let's edit that in vim vim config.fish apparently i have another one of those open anyway so anyway i'm not going to edit anything in here so we're just going to read all i've done is set the user path you know for the fish user path for home slash dot local bin and for home slash bin if i wanted to put something in there i can if I want to put something in my home bin directory, fish can find it. You can set a fish greeting. I don't, but you can. You can set the, ter set the terminal, set the editor. I set visual to equal genie, so that way if I have a GUI editor, I can just call it visual and it'll pull up genie if I have it installed in the system. And I have browser set for Firefox ESR. Now here is where I had Vim mode key bindings. This is where you set that. But once those were set, I had a hard time getting the sudo bang bang command to work properly. But luckily a little a short little search on the internet got that got that all figured out. So once I get past that and I go through my get through the prompt configuration and all. Uh, actually, I just copied this prompt configuration from the little website that you can pull up to edit your prompts and stuff because I just wanted to, I liked this one and I want to keep it. And I don't want to fool with having to set it every time. I can just pull in my fish config and there it is. So now we're getting into the custom functions that I wrote. Well, other than this one for the pseudo bang bang replacement. This one, the custom function for line counting. So I have a function named line-count, and all that does is wc-l. So I'm going to pull up the terminal, I'm going to make the font bigger, and I'm going to show that function. So let's say I'm going to do, I'm going to make it even bigger. So let's say apt list dash dash installed pipe through line count. Also, another one that I have is count installed, because if I actually run time on this, why I'm worried about this minuscule amount of time, I don't know. But you see, this one takes 125.8 milliseconds. See, I can run this same command. So let's say count. So it's time. Count installed. So that one runs in 24.8 milliseconds and the function count installed all it runs is dpkg l pipe through grip dash c and then looks for the beginning of the the beginning of the line i i and pipes that through string trim just like all the rest of the functions that i have another one is just for listing install programs but i'm not going to fill up the terminal with that i mean well i can i mean so I'll just clear the screen and just do list installed. And I've got some more functions called mem hogs and CPU hogs, which is just going to give me a short little list of the biggest RAM, RAM hogs and CPU hogs that I have on the system. So right now, while I'm recording the video, I'm just going to do mem hogs. And it's telling me that OBS is using 2.5 gigs and you know, XORG is using a little bit. 
Python's using a little bit, Firefox is using a little bit, and yeah, that's really about it. And QEMU is using a little bit because I still have a virtual machine running too. Another one that we can do is CPU hogs. And you can see OBS is using the, is using by far the most because I'm recording HD video at the moment. Uh, Firefox is using some, QEMU is using some. So this function called resolution was actually the first one that I wrote because I wanted to see that it could call more than one thing and still work. So what I wanted to do is call up XRender. And it's looking for this star right here. So when I run XRender and I pipe it through grip, I'm looking for a star. You see, it gives me these right here. It gives me this output. So you see that I have three 2560 by 1440 monitors. None of them match, but they're all the same size, which is okay. <laughs> and then I just use the seg command to get rid of the 59.95, you know, yada, yada, yada. So all I'm left with is just 2560 by 1440, you know, three times. So if I just just type in resolution, this is all the output that I get. Another one that I've got is just for checking how much is available in my home part in my home folder and how much is being used in my home folder. So how much is being used in my home folder is I just named it HDD. And it says that I've got 7.8 gigs used and it's 1% because it's on a terabyte SSD. Another one, actually, let me make this a little larger. This one's just called avail. So for short for available. It says that I have 776 gigs available in my home folder. And that's pretty much all of the functions that I have. Now, one of the big differences that I, that I really like about fish over bash is the fact that they use abbreviations instead of aliases. Whereas if you go through your bash history, you're going to see a bunch of aliases that just show up. If you're not the main user of that system and you go through the bash history, you're not going to know exactly what all those aliases are, especially if they're not in your bash RC. Whereas here in fish, you have these abbreviations. So if I clear the screen and I run DF, it automatically runs DF-H. Or if I run free, it automatically runs free-G. Over here, I have abbreviation set for reboot for sudo reboot, or shutdown is sudo shutdown now. Another one that I have is for my vert manager networking to start. So if I do vert network, you see it changes to sudo var sh net start default. I also have a few a few abbreviations for just for navigating the shell itself. So let's say if I wanted to, I don't know, dot c, and that takes me to config, I can hit h to go home. Or if I went to user local bin, I can hit dot dot, and it takes me back one directory. Or or I can hit dot 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 and it takes me back two directories. Or if I wanted to you know, get a long listing, LL. Or long listing with almost all of them, LA. Or if I wanted to get, or just go home and I want to list just the dot files, LS period, or LS dot. And that lists just the dot files. I also have one set up for Q for exit. Uh, I can hit D and just go to downloads. I can hit C just to clear the screen. And so, but if you go back through all of these, you, you don't see any of the aliases or any of the shorthand abbreviations. It's all the commands written out, except for, of course, your functions 
your functions are going to be listed as, well, your functions. So that's about all I've got for right now. I've only been using Fish for a couple of weeks, and I have really, really enjoyed it. It has been a fantastic experience, and I just wanted to kind of show the things that I've done to make my terminal life a little easier. And if you're interested in any of this kind of stuff like this, and you want to use some of my stuff, I'll have it over on my GitHub page, and I'll link that down in the description below. So... With that said, thank you for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Like, share, and subscribe.